overview on alturvation. So uh, a quick refresher, Cindy gave me an intro yesterday, but just for your benefit, uh, I've been working with Cindy and Jennifer and in this industry for now over seven plus years, but I've been around the block when it comes to sales, marketing, and especially, well, as our team has seen, I'm no stranger to training and coaching, i.e. today's call. So great to work with you, Ryan. <laughs> now, um, let's just jump right in here. Alturvation, obviously, we already hinted at it. They're, they're based up in Vermont. They're made in the USA company. Everything is fabricated, manufactured, and assembled there. So you have a great uh, exposure from the Northeast. As far as today's agenda, though, we're really just trying to help clear the air, as we've talked about, so to speak, on where to go and how to address IAQ, indoor air quality, uh, discussing UV. UV actually has more layers to it than just UV in general. Uh, there's the UVC versus UVGI technology, which I'll clarify today. And then, we're, as I hinted yesterday before we set up this call, we're really trying to align with what ASHRAE has published for the HVAC industry. We want to make sure any products we might be recommending, because Alturvation makes a ton, and a lot of the competitors out there make a ton of products too. But let's make sure the ones we are recommending are aligning with those recommendations during this uh, troublesome time. And then obviously there'll be a couple of things in here we'll differentiate against some of the products that are out there by the competition because people think uh, they all do the same thing. So, and uh, no, Ryan, I hinted earlier on the first slide, I usually ask for questions towards the end, but since we're going more one-on-one -on -one personal style, yep. stay unmuted and jump in, feel free to ask questions. So uh, that's the fun of going more one-on-one -on -one with less people on the call. So, you already hinted that you guys have dug heavily into UV and IAQ lately. So I just want to refresh this, that this is a simple mock-up of a, of a you know, HVAC layout for a residential system. Uh, specifically though, the upper right-hand image here, we added this in because we do make ionization technology as well. That's our ionization unit called the Orion. It generates a negative, ion, negative uh, versus positive ionization to if you've done any research into that, which we'll get into as well on this presentation, it helps your filters do a better job. And I'll explain that in a second. But also I wanna really just clarify filtration versus UV disinfection versus UV air purification. So obviously, Alturvation's recommendation is, hey, I've got my return duct coming in, let's make sure we're filtering it, uh, let's make sure we're putting lamps on the coil to keep it clean, and then your air passes through your equipment, and then as it exits and goes into the supply, uh, you're probably going to be doing some type of air stream or air supply treatment. Again, we'll dig more into this as far as, as we progress through the training. Now, this will be the geekiest slide that we'll talk about because <laughs> this is what I really wanted to clarify. So in IAQ, there's UVGI technology. So this is, and I hate to use Wikipedia, but it was the fastest one available. I'm still trying to find a better scientific source that, really doesn't blow people's brains wide open, but this was the best, most understandable version. But obviously UVGI, and I'll shorten it up is this. If you're using a UVC class lamp, which is the UVC is the light spectrum, that specific spectrum out of the UV spectrum of light, then you're actually incorporating UVGI technology into your HVAC system. If you're using a UVA or a UVB lamp, not possible. You have to have a UVC lamp. So in the terminology of the of this, they call that UVGI technology. I'll be expanding more on that as well as we get through the uh, the training, just to make sure everybody's understanding this. Uh, then we, I do like to clarify PCO and ionization too, uh, because a lot of our products have PCO. A lot of the competition products have PCO out there. As far as ASHRAE standards, they don't really get into that granular level. They care more about UVGI at the base level. If you want to add in PCO, it's a great add-on. If you want to add on ionization. It's a great add-on. When we clarify PCO, it's photocatalytic oxidation. The only way that's even possible is if you have a surface area that has been you know, manufactured or you know, treated with titanium dioxide. A lot of our products have carbon. Some of our products have metal surfaces. So if we are promoting a product that adds PCO on, those surface areas have the titanium dioxide on it. And then that stuff is worthless unless you have a UV lamp which activates it and creates a reaction field, a, AKA the photocatalytic oxidation. And again, this is an added benefit because it does also help, you know, break down airborne, you know, DNA live particulates, VOC molecules, deodorization, all of that. Again, we'll clarify that later, 
This is just trying to stay high level. Now, for your benefit also, I am going to switch over and play one of our videos from Ultravation that we cut out that specifically explains PCO, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Stand by. I'm going to switch screens here. Ryan, so far, is there anything you're seeing on here that the other manufacturers you've done training on is different? Um, no. UV UVC and PCO are pretty standard terms. So when you were talking about documentation or something <clears throat> that seemed legit, because everybody seems to be, while well, you're looking for that, Scott, you let me know when you're ready again. But okay. I'm trying to listen for where you see, um, we've got the documentation you're looking for. So when you see something that um, looks like, oh, this is what I've been looking for, maybe you could let us know. Okay. Yeah, and I'll have I'll 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 show you that as a documentation link, so I can send that back to you as well. Uh, but anyway, so real quick, this is our standby. Quick explanation on PCO, and this is thanks to Alteration. They did a good job putting together the animation. Here's how it works: the UV sun, advanced oxidation levels, color changes, and exclusive titanium dioxide formulation. When UV light is applied to the surface. The titanium dioxide ring becomes energized, causing it to release electrons. The electrons then combine with oxygen to create what are known as superoxides. The titanium dioxide then collects a replacement electrons from moisture in the air to become charged particles known as hydroxyl radicals. Together with the superoxide, a powerful photocatalytic oxidation, or PCO3, is created. As odors, germs, Mold and other VOC organic molecules approach the PCO theme. They are disassembled as the oxidizers pull electrons from them. The purification process is complete, with the remaining molecules recombined to form simple water vapor and trace amounts of carbon dioxide. Ultravation advanced oxidation process. All right, so just a quick, very, very simple overview on what that is all about. As far as PCO goes, let me switch back here to our presentation. Scott, give me one second, would you? You got it. Thank you. And actually, I'm gonna queue up the other animation for you guys. I love cartoons. <laughs> I guess it does constitute kind of like a cartoon, right? It's, you know, it's animated. All so, the little things going everywhere. So and actually, have any beer for lunch. <laughs> now, this animation is actually the ionization process. There's no audio on this one, so I'm just going to let it play okay. and uh, until Ryan can come back on. I'm back. Cool. So this is the animation for ionization. This is just showing how, and this is our Orion product, but it actually shows how, hey, you're passing out. It's basically the thunderstorm. If you've done any studying on ionization, lightning across the sky during a thunderstorm actually charges the airborne particulates. That's why you get that nice, clean smelling thunderstorm, fresh air, whatever you want to call it. Right. Uh, but a lot of people don't know about the science behind that, which is, oh, by the way, if you could take that reactionary process and put it in your HVAC system, oh, great. Now we can charge airborne microparticulates that are too small to be caught by air filters and get them to stick to each other. So you're basically, you're generating negative ions and then your positively charged dirt that's in the air bonds with each other and it helps them stick together and then it helps your filters do a better job. And there's also some other side benefits to that. It does actually help with uh, other issues like airborne particulates uh, being broken down as well. Because there are some people who are anti-UV, let's be honest. I don't know if you guys have come across it, but um, they've actually basically noted that, hey, if I'm so sensitive to UV, which is rare in the population, some people say, you know what, let me at least get ionization installed so I can at least start impacting my indoor air quality at some positive level. Uh, but again, most people are, are not fully against UV, so. Did you say that the ionization is less expensive than the UV as a solution? Or oh, God, yeah, yeah, or definitely. Yeah, because you're, all you're doing is ionizing the air. You're not doing UV lamps. You're not doing anything else. And I'll show you guys later in the presentation. The Orion is such a simple product. Uh, and we actually have one of our Induct solutions, which we're going to be presenting today, 
which aligns with the ASHRAE standards, has the ionization technology also included in it with the UV as well. So, um, but anyway, I just want to give you guys those couple of animations. There's your entertainment for the day. Now you're stuck with me the rest of the show. <laughs> I really thought I really got the point. Like if you could take all those tiny particles and group them so they hit the filter yeah. and that the filter can stop it, I feel like that's the least expensive way to be as healthy as possible. Right. But again, to be fair and what Ryan's goals were, I have to make sure that we're training today on what ASHRAE calls out. ASHRAE right. hasn't gone in... They have such a huge handbook. Chapter 62 is specifically dedicated to UV, and we have the links on that, but they don't really get into ionization at all. And this, is, this graphic that I'm showing you guys now came out of the ASHRAE handbook. Okay, so we took this directly out of their positioning on indoor air quality, and this is from the 2019 ASHRAE handbook for HVAC applications. And they're just giving you some mock-ups. So that way I'm proving, hey, guys, I'm not just showing you the mock-ups that Ultravation has designed or, you know, and all these links here on the side, we have all these links. So all these, I have, I have it directly from their resources recommend, recommended. I have uh, their position on airborne infectious diseases and I have, there you go, chapter 62. So all of these links I can send you, Ryan, uh, as a separate email. So you have these as resources, no matter who you're looking at. Obviously, we want you to love Ultravation, but the more resources you guys have to back up your contractors and their customers, the better. But the, the, the short story here is they specifically talk about airstream and surface area decontamination and addressing things with UV. And as you can tell here in their mock-ups, everything is UV, UV. They're not talking about ionization or anything else. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. All right. So as I hinted, to understand the U versus the U, you got UVC. And you got UVI, UVGI, okay? UVGI technology, which is what ASHRAE calls for and CDC, they both call out, it's not possible unless you're using the UVC energy. And again, across all forms of ultralight, the sun, tanning beds, yada, 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 UVC is the most impacting and most destructive. I mean, the last bullet point right here on the right is this is a very destructive tight packet of energy that does not reflect or reach or refract nearly at all. So we don't care about any of the other uh, components. We want the UVC. And in order to do UVGI, you have to have those lamps. Now, the good thing is this, whether it's observation or anybody else, everybody in HVAC, if you're manufacturing a product for UV, they have to be using a UVC class bulb. So the good thing is everybody's consistent there, uh, but it's important to help people understand why. And I like this graphic here because especially if we start addressing surface area versus airstream, this is why it's so important that when you mount your bulbs uh, dealing with surface area, this is how much impact that UV spectrum can do. So obviously the closer the bulb is to a surface, uh, the more power you have hitting that and breaking it down and killing and decontaminating. Um, so the other cool thing though is UVC, even though we see the potency here, they always call it out. It does dissipate very rapidly in the atmosphere. So it's not like you have this crazy amount of potency blowing throughout your house. That's why this is captured and, and, and secured inside of your HVAC system. Scott, right. in that though, yeah. all UVC bulbs are not created equal. Correct. And I have a slide on that too. Okay. <laughs> you are, you are on it, man. He's, he's going to be uh, staying like one step ahead of you today. I love it. So I it the best. I, I, I get it. Cindy pulls the right guys in. So again, I, I threw together this slide for our training just because let's just, again, really clarify it. UVC is a lamp type. Okay. It is using a specific section of the UV spectrum. Okay. UVGI is what we call the technology or the tools using that technology that is generated by the UVC lamp. So Again, UVC lamps are used to, you know, you put them on a coil. If you put them on a coil, then you're doing UVGI on the coil. If you're installing it in the Airstream, great. Then you're doing UVGI in the Airstream. If you're installing a, any kind of product that uses a UVC lamp in, and I'll get this later, it's called an upper room unit. There's no duct work involved. It's a special product that we actually have for that. Uh, then you're use, using UVGI in the upper room. I think we understand the association. Long story short, if you got a UVC class bulb and you're applying it anywhere in the HVAC system, then you could say you're using UVGI technology. And that's yep. the explanation from ASHRAE and all of that. 
So now here's your slide, Ryan. <laughs> we have a patented bulb design. Ultravation does have offer a standard UVC class bulb, but we recommend the T3. T3 is our verbiage. It is our trademark because we take the bulb and we actually encapsulate it in a quartz sleeve that has a gas layer between the two surfaces. Why is that so cool? Well, one, you now have protected the bulb from anything getting on it, moisture, debris, et cetera, in the system. Two, because it's insulated, the bulb can hit peak temperature, meaning it's more efficient. Or it's not gonna have to work as hard to stay as, and I hate to use the term warm or hot, but if you ever touch a light bulb, it gets warm. Right. Uh, but in order to get that bulb to its peak efficiency, you want it to stay warm. Well, if you're doing it during the spring and summer season, you're blowing cold air through the system, your, your bulb is battling with the elements around it. So that's why we have this graph here. A standard UVC class bulb, typical bulb, you're, you're sticking in here about 60%, maybe on the high end, just under 80% efficiency. Well, thanks to this design, if, you, if you're putting a T3 class lamp in, well, now you can actually get up to that 100% efficiency because it's insulated, it's gonna last, it's gonna hit its peak temperature it needs to. So you're also gonna have more potency because you are getting it to its maximum level of activation. The other beauty of that is, well, it's a better bulb. So we guarantee, here's the other thing in the industry. Let me pause on this. Almost every UV light or UV bulb product company says, hey, you have a two year warranty bulb. They should anyway. What that means is you have a bulb that is guaranteed to light up for two years. That does not mean you have a two year life cycle on the bulb. This T3 bulb is a two year life cycle bulb because we got 40% more energy coming out of it. This is gonna burn and it's rated for an 18,000 hour bulb. Standard UVC class lamps that are, do not have this T3 design, including our entry level bulbs, are a standard one year bulb. It's guaranteed, warranty-wise, for two years to light up. But a non-T3 bulb should be changed every single year. It's a 9,000 rated uh, bulb. Does that make sense? 9,000 hour hours. rated bulb? Yeah, hours. exactly. Okay. Right. So standard, standard lamps without this engineering, 9,000 hour bulbs. You can, you're, you're guaranteed to light up for two years, but after 9,000 hours is done, I think the last time I checked the math that you've lost about 30 to 40% of its potency because you know, it's, it's burning 24 seven, it's, it's a bulb. So uh, the UV uh, capability is, be, is dissipating over time. So if you're not putting a T3 bulb in, maintenance, preventative maintenance, uh, whatever the contractors are signing up, hey, let's make sure we're changing that bulb every single year. But if they're putting in our products to have the T3 class bulb, actually you only have to change that bulb and buy a new bulb every two years. It's actually going to last the 18,000 hours, which also meets the, the two year warranty, air quotes, so to speak. Do you see these guys replacing the bulb in the field, Ryan, once they put it in? Do they, are they repeat buying? I hope so. Um, I do. Um, <laughs> the guys that are doing UV light are focused on maintenance contracts and this will go along with it. It's the same contractor. Right. Yeah. I mean, basically, they should be going in. They should be servicing the coil, cleaning it with Speed Clean, for example. Uh, then you go in, you do your, your other prevent PM inspections, make sure there's no gas leaks if you have a gas line going in there. Electrical connections are good. Okay, now let's change the filters. Let's change the UV lamps, et cetera, et cetera. So, all right, let's jump on. So how are you rating? Is there a way that... Ultravation is rating the intensity of the bulb based upon um, what else is behind the bulb. In other words, the whatever that bulb is adhered to to make it be to light, and then based upon it, you know, being X amount of inches and airflow across that is is you know eighteen hundred cfm or whatever it is. Do they rate that bulb with any intensity factors across the board? No, they don't need to. I mean, you get your 9,000, your 18,000. That's it. It's, it's a one year or a two year life bulb. Uh, granted, yes, your T3 is hitting a better intensity. Uh, now, they do get into that type of stuff on the commercial side. 
because they, they have to know that stuff. They want to know how much CFMs you're pushing through a, a commercial space. They want to know, they, they, when we do our bulb installs, and I'll show this later in the presentation, if you're doing a supply duct run, you have to make sure the bulb is covering the distance. Uh, for example, our bulbs are sold residentially in 12 or 17 inch length. That is the standard application because when you get into surface area, for example, treatment, your bulb length should match the amount of coil surface area you're dealing with. So if you're dealing right. with a small, a small system like I have, I have a house built in 1910. I have a simple two ton system. I don't need a lot and I have a small coil. So I don't, I only needed a 12 inch lamp assembly to keep that coil clean. I didn't need to order the 17. So um, that's just an example there uh, as far as that goes. So really when it comes to intensity or whether it's a, a T3 bulb or a non T3 bulb, if we're dealing with coil area, you know, coil surface area, you're just keeping the bulbs mounted closely. It's as simple as that. The further away you go, the less ability that, that UV light is going to have to keep that coil, you know, clean. <laughs> I, I guess I could simplify it as simple as that. Um, now we do get into our specs. If you're doing an air supply treatment, we do say, Hey, listen, some of our products will treat up to 5,000 square foot. Of, of air that's being moved throughout the house. And they have a CFM rating with that and everything else. And I'll get into that actually. Our, our Solaris, which I'm gonna to talk to, uh, does have an adjustment capability for that as well. Cool so far? Yep. Awesome. So I love this graph. Uh, we pulled this from our, actually our commercial side, which I'll, I'll show you later. UV matrix is what we call all of our commercial products. But the important thing here I love about this is, is this is just throwing out a whole bunch of scientific jargon. Don't worry about it. Long story short, the bottom of the graph is like bacteria yep. and the top of the graph is viruses. Uh, ergo, I, even the top one has a virus in the name. So all this stuff has been tested over time with the basic scientific method. The point of this though is just to help people understand, okay, if I'm just dealing with basic bacteria, that's not really normally airborne. It's stuff that's like growing on the surface. Well, that's why in the blue, if you knew our commercial side, uh, the SI is surface and the AS is uh, airstream. So that's okay. why we say coil plus airstream. So this is what we get. We're going to get into this importance here. And we talk about how if you stick something in the airstream, that's great. But if you're not taking care of the coil, the bottom of the graph here, we're going to be worrying about stuff growing on the coil. Okay, great. So if we could start with the coil, awesome. All this stuff is taken care of without even getting into the airstream. But as you start getting into more airborne based concerns, Okay, then we might want to put a product in the airstream to get us that maximum potency and efficiency of, you know, killing things. So if, if, you have, if you have no concerns of airborne viruses, then great. Just put something on your coil, keep your coil clean, you're fine. Uh, so this is something we use on the commercial side to educate people on the importance of why both technologies or, well, basically both applications of the technology is crucial. If you want to hit maximum efficiency of killing things, you should be taking care of the coil. And then the green is adding your airstream to make an even bigger impact. Make sense? Yep. Cool. All right. So alteration is a ton of residential products. Um, these are just the few, and I'm going to show you on each slide after this, what we're focusing right now that are or not aligning with obviously what Ashray has called out and what we know. Uh, but I just remind people, hey, we've got filtration. We've got you know our ionization. We have our T3 class bulbs. We have a ductless solution. We have induct solutions for the air supply as well as coil. So let's just jump into the Advantage Power PCO. This is actually an enhancement off of our, we came out with the first ever in the industry a couple of years ago, a throwaway product called the Advantage. So the Advantage, again, all UV normally, our higher end stuff, you would just you know open up the power head or disconnect the power and you just change the bulb and that's it. Well, we decided to come out with a product where this black module is actually glued onto the bulb. So it's a cheaper bulb to manufacture. And then guys can just come back in, grab that whole thing and, and rip it out every year or every two years and throw it away and put a whole new one in and they get all new warranty. Well, we went ahead and said, okay, let's take that throwaway concept and let's beef it up a little bit. So the Advantage Power PCO standard comes with the T3 bulb. So you automatically have a two year product that you, have to, you don't have to worry about. But then we added on carbon and additional metal surface area, which is on each side here. So as you can see, you got carbon down the center and then these metal plates are expanding outward. So that's what's mounted in the ductwork 
with that mounting plate. So the only thing you have to come back is unplug, basically take these two screws out here and you grab that black box and just pull the whole thing straight out and throw it away and put a whole new one in. And you never disrupt your duct installation. So, but the beauty here is that you have two metal surface areas that have PCO, the titanium dioxide on it, and you have the carbon that has the titanium dioxide infused in it. So you're not just, and the whole point of this product is I'm gonna mount it right in the plenum over top of the coil. So my UV bulb is exposed enough to shine straight down onto the coil, but I've added these panels on to also give me some added PCO. So this is just a much easier access price point and Cindy can send you stuff later, but this is a great way to say, you know what? I want to at least get uh, some UV on the coil and get a little bit of that PCO to give me some deodorization and help with some more airborne stuff. Is this our top end Airstream solution? No. This is more entry level because some people need to put their toe in the water and figure it out. The other beauty of this product having carbon on it is you can actually classify this as a no ozone product. A classic byproduct of UV is the UV reaction creates an ozone byproduct, kind of like a, a medical office smell, and some people are sensitive to it. So if you can do carbon on a product, that'll help absorb that odor and remove it, and that's what makes it a zero ozone product. Okay. Cool. Oh, the other beauty of all of our products, I always throw this little tagline in here. The homeowners can't go buy this stuff. This is pro trade. Okay. We do not, Alteration does not sell online. You have to go through wholesalers and you have to go through your contractors. Now, don't get me wrong. Every once in a while, I see a couple of bulbs floating out there on Amazon. That tells me that a contractor decided to take extra stock and maybe set up his own profile and try and sell some stuff online. It's a no, no. It's virtually impossible for us to crack down on it. Cindy's talked about this in the past. But hey, we're trying. So we're trying to stay pro-trade. We want to make sure that this stuff is being done for the homeowner by the professional. So here's your Cadillac or Mercedes that is aligning with Ashray and more. So this is our Solaris. This is our Airstream recommendation. Okay, this is something I'm going to put in the ductwork and I'm, I'm getting it done. So hot points. It is photocatalytic. So all the metal surface areas have uh, the titanium dioxide on it. And it's actually beefed up a little bit. It's a silver ion oxidation. We've also taken the Orion technology, the ionization electrodes, and built it into this sucker as well. So this thing is not just powering UV. There's also four ionization electrodes inside of this as well. So you're also gaining the ionization technology. So, you're not, so basically, hey, I'm killing odors. I'm killing bacteria. I'm killing viruses as it's blown by. Because I have the ionization, I have the thunderstorm fresh air. And because this is one of our better products, it's lifetime warranty. So you're just going to go back every two years and change the bulb because this, this also T3 is standard. But the reason why we recommend this product is because it's not just Airstream. These notable options down here is so important, right? So here in the diagram is your Solaris installed in the supply. For a contractor, if I just want to wire one product, that's all you have to do. The Solaris comes standard to be able to power an, an add-on lamp module. So you can add on, our, we, we call our, our lamp modules easy lights. So you could say, great, I'm going to wire up my Solaris, but that power head is also going to be able to power a secondary lamp bulb to handle the coil. So on my install, I'm throwing the Solaris in the duct. I'm only wiring one thing to the equipment for power. And then I'm going to basically daisy chain my coil lamp off of that. So now I've, I'm handling coil treatment for surface area and I'm handling air supply. So that's why this is our top recommended product residentially right now, because you'll find here in a little bit, I'll show you the competition doesn't always do that. Well, that, this is what you guys recommend up against Halo. Oh yeah. Yeah. And since you brought it up, <laughs> here you go. We actually had alteration did a great job actually putting together a nice um, uh, cross reference sheet which again, Cindy could send us to you as well. Uh, but the important thing here is we're not trying to bash the competition. We're just trying to say, listen, you can go with that, but you can't do this. You can do this, you can't do this. So for this point of this conversation, we threw APCO in here uh, because this is kind of like that Advantage Power PCO I just showed you because okay. they have metal surface and only a single strip of carbon. And this is their air supply product. You cannot add on a, a, a bulb. The Remy cannot add on a bulb. Right. We can add on the coil lamp bulb. They cannot. 
So these are strictly air supply products. I mean, unless you can mount that APCO product really close to the coil and you have enough room for all that, you know, in your plenum, you might be able to get away with that. But really the best solution is putting a properly dedicated Airstream supply product and then putting your coil lamp on. But the other important things I want to call out here is that not all the warranties are the same, not all the quality is the same. Uh, some hot items here are, uh, have you ever, uh, do your research, Ryan, did you figure out what active PCO versus passive PCO means? No, everything that I've looked at was, was active PCO. Okay. So long story short is this, if you got carbon, it's passive. <laughs> That's it. So, cause we actually have in my house, I don't have the Solaris. I have what's called our, it looks just like this big beefy power head and everything else. But instead of all this metal surface area, I have three strips of carbon. So three columns of it. So I got, I got three times the carbon as the competition because I'm going to flip this house into a rental. I don't want to worry about a future tenant complaining about ozone. So I was like, fine. I'm going to go no ozone across the board, but I already had two coil lamps mounted on my coil as well. So I already had that for two years. I just had the catalyst installed two weeks ago, but that would be, there's another version basically of the Solaris called the catalyst. Those are our two higher end residential products because both of them are guaranteed for life. Both of them can add on the coil lamp bulb. The difference is the Solaris right now is kind of ranking better because we have ionization added in. Yeah, you, you add ionization in on the Remy side, but they only have two, we have four electrodes. So we have twice as much ionization. Uh, our surface area, what well, you can't tell in the diagram here is, we actually have two layers of metal plating going all the way around. So it's a four-sided boxed uh, ballast, and it's two layers thick, meaning uh, with space in between. So we've increased the amount of surface area that has the titanium dioxide on it to give you even more action, so to speak. Uh, nobody else has that. So the other beauty here is, thanks to Made in Vermont Quality, Made in the USA construction, we're the only one that's all metal. I mean, everybody else has got, well, well APCO's got aluminum, and then Remy's got plastic and plastic. aluminum. We're stainless steel and aluminum because we fabricate everything in-house. We have our own metal shop. So uh, the other thing here is this. You earlier asked about adjustability, maybe potency, et cetera. How do you figure that out? So in, and I, we can send you the spec sheets on it. When you take the power head off of our Solaris, there's just the main spot here. And I'm going to stop sharing for a second from using my hands. You have the, you have the, the mount plate and there's actually a rod that comes out and that rod, there's actually a guide and it has CFMs and square footage listed on it. So I just grab that rod and I drag it out where I push it in, which can adjust our system. Uh, to adjust the amount of UV being exposed. So here's the best part. It's not a passive PCO product, right? It's active because I don't have carbon. But I can dial this sucker down a little bit. So if I want to reduce some of that ozone sensitivity, I can. But the beauty is with our system, we are not blocking any of the UV bulb in that process. We're still getting it all out there. With the Remy system, have you, have you ever opened a box and looked at it? No. Okay. They don't have that. They When you adjust their product, it's – there's like slots in the ballast. So when you adjust it, you see metal plating go across and literally close it off. So now you're preventing air from passing through and getting you know, around the UV. Now granted, all these devices are creating a field, but I also still want air getting as close to the bulb as possible too. Their design blocks some of that. So that's something that we put into the cross-reference to help people understand that a little bit too, is that okay, we're not blocking any of our service area. We're not blocking any of our UV when we create that adjustment. Uh, we figured out that there's a raw material that's clear and translucent that can slide over the most, uh, most powerful points of the bulb on the ends. And that allows us to create that adjustability without getting too technical. So, and then again, I hinted that earlier, we're lifetime uh, with, a, with a, actually it's a two year life because it's a T3 bulb now. Um, their products, it, well, for, since we're talking about Remy, it's actually only a two year and that two years on the PCO, not on the whole ballast, not on the whole product. It's a five year on the ballast, not a lifetime. And then for some reason in their fine print, it says no warranty on parts that are outsourced. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm guessing everything that they buy from somebody else when they build it, I don't know what that means. So I'm just using their verbiage. This is from their packaging we don't have that problem. It's just, Hey man, lifetime warranty product. And if something ever went wrong with our Solaris, the only thing you'll ever have to replace is that, 
that box, that power head. It's okay. two screws. You take the whole power head off and we ship you a whole new one, pop it back on. Why take the whole thing out of the ductwork if there's nothing wrong with that? Because that's also how you change your bulb too. You just take the power head off, two screws, take the bulb out, put a new bulb in, done. So for the contractor, it's very, very easy for maintenance and, and handling it. So uh, does this help give you some comparison? It does. Okay. So the biggest thing I like to stand out on this whole comparison is really, can you add on a coil lamp? Nope. We can. So there's a lot of other reasons why it makes, makes this to the top, but I just love pointing that out. <laughs> so uh, again, we do have other UV stuff. So uh, you, if you install this kit in a ductless head, you're doing UVGI technology inside of a ductless head. These are UVC this, class bulbs. You're buying this from who now? You're, you're, um, you're, are you buying this from us? Because I remember you're saying that you had bought this for the mini splits and you thought it was ours on our last call. Yeah. So we're buying, we're buying this product from you guys. Cool. Thank you. Smart choice. <laughs> there are a few, there's a few competitors out there now. There's like one or two other ones that are trying to do what we do. Um, I've noticed that not every, I think only one of them has our directional shielding. So it's important, especially in a ductless head, we only let yeah. the, the light come out in one direction. So when you install it and you use the self-adhesive uh, mount points, you can then spin uh, the light to shine to where you want it to go. And depending on the installer, most guys are going to shine that up onto the coil because that's where stuff's collecting and then it drips down into the drain pan and then you got stuff growing. Obviously, if you have UV on the coil, you're going to kill it before it drips down into the drain pan. Uh, other people, they like to shine it onto the blower wheel. We all know the blower wheels get all choked up and crazy, but uh, I would still rather, I personally would rather treat the source of where the contamination could happen, which is on the coil where all the moisture and the particulates collect that. Um, but if you use our system, you understand that in our box, we let you uh, not only plug in one bulb if you only need so much uh, coverage, if you have a smaller head, because in the kit, we give you a little bypass module you plug in and a bypass is the secondary bulb. And now you've got your spare bulb to change in one year. So, and again, these are one year change outs. These are not T3 class bulbs. We couldn't put that level of engineering into something so small. What's the and deviation between one or two lamp installation? Um, it's really, it's all, but honestly, most guys are putting two lamps in it's, you have to have a really small head, uh, because, and depending on where every manufacturer, you know, every manufacturer is different. So if you can't get the, the lamp up super, super close and you back it out a little bit, you'll see an increased amount of uh, UV light being exposed. So if it's a smaller head residentially, then great in a small room, I might be able to get away with that one bulb, but I can tell you most of the live installs I've sat it on, the guys are putting both bulbs in. But I just like, it's good to know that guys have the option. I mean, I don't, do you have any ductless at your office? Um, it's actually um, in Ocean City. Yes, we do. And okay. AJ has these in his home. Okay, cool. So it, it probably went with both. I mean, if it's a standard head, I mean, you probably went with both bulbs. So I've only seen some really, really small ductless in like uh, server rooms and like really, really small, you know, back offices off of a pizzeria or restaurant, stuff like that. So. So this is my poor lazy man's version of indoor air quality. Thank you. <laughs> there, there you go, Cindy. I mean, so the Orion is awesome. It, it, it's truly more, it is officially more powerful than everybody else's ionization standalone product. Uh, new Calgon tried coming out with one, this little like spinner thing. And yep. if you, if you looked at the packaging, Ryan, that thing doesn't look anywhere near as nice as this. <laughs> and we have way more potency and ion generation coming out of this thing because it's properly designed for that. I'm not trying to bash new Calgon. It's a great step in the right direction. But the problem with that product is you have to install it inside the system. Well, the biggest selling point on our Orion is these, well, I think they're black now, but these white electrodes that are coming out, those will flip completely down uh, and actually allow you to mount this on the outside of the equipment or the outside of the ductwork. And then all you gotta do is drill two holes to put those electrodes through. As long as that's in the duct, you're getting the job done because some people's equipment, depending on where they want to strategically place this might not have a ton of space. Maybe they don't want to run wires into the equipment, et cetera. Now, more often than not, most guys are mounting this thing right before the filter because they're trying to improve the filtration on the return. As you, as I already hinted, our Solaris, you can have the ionization going on the supply. If you really want to go to town, add this on as well at the return and you're really amping up your filtration as far as the ability for it to trap a lot of things. So 
And we really try and help guys mount this thing, man. We, we give you the magnetic mount in the box. We give you the transformer. Uh, again, there's no UV, so there's no, it's a no ozone product. As Cindy pointed out, hey, this is, this is a good entry point, so with no yeah, UV. Do you guys have a good, better, best with indoor air quality yet that, when, that you're leading in a sales capacity? I mean, I'm trying to learn, too. So. No. All right, so if, this, if you had some good, better, best, this sounds like... Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, here's what, uh, and I'll tell you right up front what we're doing, is that I'm adhering basically to data and things that are in print that make sense to us and should make sense to our contractor. Yeah, if that's so the case. So ASHRAE standards yeah. um, across the board. Um, I've, I talk about the idea of PCO mm -hmm. and then tell them it's not an ASHRAE standard. Will Good. it help? Yes. Is there data behind it to say it'll help? Yes, but it's not an ASHRAE standard. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I'm looking at my guys sell lights. Okay. And really that's my push. Well, then um, to align with a, that. If they're in a application where they walk into somebody's home and I got dogs and smells and things of that such, um, I've told them, you know, that's where you talk about PCO and, and go from there. Um, if you walk into the home and it's, you know, it, it's the normal average home and without six dogs and it's husband, wife, two kids and a dog, sell them a light. You're doing better than you were doing before. Right. They'll see, they'll see and still feel a difference in the house. And so far my guys have taken that and, and run with it somewhat. Yep. Look, and I, you know, honestly, this is a whole new market for a lot of them. Um, we've done. I've done four pitches in the last week and everybody kind of went, you know, they were all like bobbleheads and they got going in the right direction. And um, we included uh, the UV light that you guys have for the minis in the presentation and kind of ran with it. Um, the product that we have been running with has been uh, field controls mm -hmm. and you know, they're the idea behind their product is it, it's got some data. And that data is, you know, microwatt per centimeter squared. And basically what that is, is how that, how much of that power of that light is going across wherever it's supposed to go and what the intensity of that bulb is. So when I looked at Halo, when I looked at Honeywell, um, even when I looked at Ultravation, um, and gosh, there was two other ones, um, nobody had anything about lamp intensity and that's why i said but not all bulbs are created equal because when i pressed on the guys from honeywell about well what's the bulb you have there and what's its intensity well you know the got the answer i got was well all bulbs are created equal and i went oh no well, <laughs> um, well here's why you know this fuel controls is a great company i i i respect companies that have their act together uh honeywell is not yeah. a uv iaq niched company and they're the fun part in there is they they're they haven't even gotten anything out to say that any of their PCO product or their UVC um, bulb doesn't create ozone. And I went, well, I'm out. Like if you can't yeah. if you can't care. even say ozone, you're I'm done with you. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Honeywell doesn't care. Honeywell Honeywell is a business management business, and they have the name and. Uh, they did that crazy stuff with their thermostat, which is making Pro One's business much better. Yeah. yeah. So the um, you know, they opened up their, you know, their presentation with Residio, and you know, kind of still trying to hold on to that Honeywell name. But you know, when I asked Sean, my local rep, I said, "How much longer until you can't even mention the H word?" And he yeah. went, "What one year?" They had a seven-year total licensing agreement, and we're already approaching three years into that. And, yeah. and according to the rep I met in Buffalo, New York, he said they were pushing to have it transferred within three to four years. And while well, we're already two to three years into it, so. Yeah, Sean, <laughs> Sean told me he had one more year until he couldn't mention the word again, so. There you go. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, when we talked about, um, when I looked at Halo product, Halo was the worst one. They, I mean, they're probably a very profitable company. They'd be great to work as a salesperson for because they're, they're making a small mint because I think their product's garbage and they're charging a shitload for it. Yep. So, yep. 
Yeah, we, that's why we showed you that cross-reference because the Halo is the most name drop product right now. They've done a great job marketing. Uh, my issue is it's not 100% aligned with the ASHRAE standards and the guidelines. Like, and it's, it's okay. Kind of close. Just and, be, you know, be honest. It basically says, <laughs> you know, here's Dr. Francis and he loves our product. Yeah. And I'm like, well, okay, so what's your claim to fame? Well, yeah. our claim to they fame is... I don't care about Dr. Francis because that's not a yeah. double blind you know, study. There's, it's not even based on a scientific method. Yeah. Like you guys are overstretching your marketing. Well, wh um, that's why I wanted to go to my guys with, and I, and I, I really don't like UV at all because you know, initially when you, look at the, when you look at the market for UV and you went... It's a challenging market. Seven years ago, there, no, there was a big yeah. peak. And then from that point, every year, UV sales have gone down. And the reason being is because it's become a snake oil product. Because of some bad companies doing that. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The beauty, that's why I love Ultravation, not just because we're the reps, uh, but I mean, that's why I'm showing you this slide too, because guys, like, we're not just playing in the residential market. Ultravation custom designs commercial level solutions for hospitals and universities and, you know, Air, airports. I mean, these guys aren't just playing around in the residential market. Like they, they know what they're doing. This is all they do too. This isn't like the Honeywells and other companies out there. Like they only focus on water and air, you know, purification, disinfection, et cetera. Like that's it. This is, they, they were founded on water and then just, you know, exploded into the air market. So, and then do you guys ever come across commercial at all? You do. Give me one second, Scott. I'm going to switch from my laptop to my, uh, Oh yeah to my phone. Just give me one second. Sure. Is your laptop running out of electricity? No, you know, when you're, when you're at home and you're a dad, you have to run people to work in the middle of the week. It's fun. I got it. I got it. Well, I hope everybody's safe. And Cindy, is this helping by the way for you as well? Oh, this is awesome. You know what? I've never been more comfortable and like learned more. And I mean, we've done a few things before, but and just being with Ryan to be able to be in his shoes, as the salesperson and really understanding what he needs when we're having this conversation. That way, you know, I can only really focus on what they, you know, I don't want to talk about stuff he doesn't give a shit about. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm impressed because I do that all the time. <laughs> not, not everybody who comes on these training calls already knows what he actually knows. So that's yeah. refreshing because I'm it's, everything. I have the best customers. I don't invest in everybody. Yeah. And not everybody likes me. He, Cindy's not. always blowing smoke up somebody's ass. <laughs> I'm not. I am so nice. And, and you know, these are the business relationships that succeed. <laughs> if you can, yeah. if you can be casual and and get along during trying times like you know, this, that's good. We had that incredible training dinner, that last dinner, that trip to AC right before the shit hit the fan. Yeah, yeah she loved. She loved that. <laughs> She was enjoying every bit of it. Yeah, we had a we had a, a very intense training on um, a, I don't know speed clean. Oh, we lost, we lost. Oh, hold on, I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh no, hold he on. just has his camera off. That's all. all yeah, right. yeah. All right, I'm back. He's probably getting going to get in his car. No, so, apparently, apparently, you know, everybody left and just didn't decide to tell me because she had to be there at four o'clock. So I was getting ready to walk and run, but I guess they already left. So oh, okay. so. So they basically showed you that they don't need you. Yeah, like and nobody <laughs> said anything. So uh, it's so nice that you wanted to take care of the people in your life. That's sweet. Oh, yeah. Great. Th this afternoon's meeting, she comes into the room and she opens up the blinds behind me. And so I can't like I'm literally selling and she opens up the blinds. I'm like, nobody can see me. What are you doing? Yeah. Well, the dog wanted to look out the window. I'm like, get the hell out of it. That doesn't help from a lighting standpoint. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm switching back. If to it makes my, you feel uh, any better, uh, I don't have kids, but we do have a dog, and my wife probably would have done the same thing. And and she's a veterinary doctor and a highly intelligent woman, but does not know anything about lighting. So uh, I'm with you. <laughs> it's totally ridiculous. Oh, that's good. My and Zoom is updating on my computer now. Oh yeah, they they pushed an update through this morning. So if you hadn't have done that, uh, it was go. It's no big deal. Well, um, uh, so where where have you touched on on the commercial side at all? You said you do do some commercial business. So we do ever... um, we do a fair amount of rooftops. Okay, um, good. We're I think last year we did about a hundred pieces, um, but not like hey the five ton, three phase you know rooftop. I'm doing um, 
most of it is 12 and a half, 15, 25 tons. Seven and a half is probably the bottom. Uh, there we go. I'm coming back in the other direction. <laughs> Let me leave this. Leave reading. I haven't been in a car in such a long time. I miss, well, I, I, I went for a drive last night just to go for a drive. I'm like, I better go drive my car to the roof of my garage and back down again. <laughs> All right, there we go. There um, we go. All right. So it's um, seven and a half, 10, 12, 15, 25 tons. Um, in Jersey, if you put, in, put up a new hospital or a new medical facility, you have to have UV. Yep. Um, so what the medical facility term is, is very gray. Yes. Hospital is defined, but like an urgent care is not a medical facility. Which is crazy because the amount of foot traffic that comes in and out of there is and really, really contagious foot traffic. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, so got, urgent care gets um, sees it all. <laughs> so like a couple of my contractors, um, I challenged two um, architects on their design and said, one, you needed, they, they totally picked the wrong RTUs. Um, and then I said, where's your UV? And they said, Oh, we don't need that. And I kind of went, no, you definitely do. You're a medical facility. And they were like, no, it's an urgent care. And I was like, yes, it's a medical facility. And we went back and forth and actually got, um, it went to the, to the point where the builder was kind of on my side about it. Cause he was like, look, I don't want to have an issue two years right. from now. Um, you have to, at least nowadays is getting, IQ is making a comeback even before COVID. Unfortunately, COVID's helping it really exponentially increase faster but to your point, the construction professional is going to be like, you know what? I have to at least make sure I've documented that we've discussed it. And then if the customer declines it, document it. Um, that way you're protected, especially if it's in code. So, yeah. Yep. I mean, so that we do a lot of training on commercial side. And honestly, that, that's the point of this one slide alone is I say, I, people are like, what are you solving for? is one of the first questions a professional, especially on the commercial side or residential asks, because, okay, if I'm dealing with a rooftop and I just want to keep the coils clean, cool. All right. I'll, I'm going to deal with a specific prop we make there called, you know, for the SI series. But if I'm also dealing with airstream concerns, then I'm going to deal with my AS series. And there's that graph again, I showed you earlier. And that's where those at the bottom of the graph, that's why blue is SI and green is AS. It's referring to these solutions, which we've learned because you're moving so much air through such a, well, sometimes mid to exponentially large size complex. You need to be a, 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 assessing all of this. Uh, for example, even in this, this middle diagram is not 100% is a digital mock-up, but it's also important to know that your UV bulbs have to cross an airstream ductwork in this type of solution at least 80% of the distance. If not, then I would take a second module like this mounted on the other side of the ductwork and then bring those bulbs in from the opposite side. You should have bulbs covering the entire area as air is passing through. These are all things I've gotten to learn from the engineers at Ultravation that I didn't realize. I thought just stick some bulbs in there and you're good. Well, and that's that T3, that T3 technology you were talking about earlier that you only put it in every two years. Well, yeah, T3 is just our, our, our trademarked you know, patented bulb that's, yes, has a two-year life cycle. This is, yeah. this, and obviously, yes, in that diagram, we're showing you that our commercial stuff uses the T3 bulbs. So, because cool. you don't want to mess around <laughs> when it comes to commercial solutions, as Ryan is hinting at, medical awesome. and et cetera. Yeah. So, and, and this just expands on that. Like, our, our SI series, you could tell this is actually, these are all, here's the other cool thing, Ryan. There's a few other commercial companies out there, but- whether it's the SI here or the 4X uh, or our um, AS series, you'll notice that all the main components we're putting outside the Airstream. That's huge. One of our biggest competitors does not put stuff outside the Airstream. <laughs> Everything is inside the Airstream. So now you, gotta, uh, uh, you have to assess the CFM impact as well. So... Now, granted, this specific design is for dealing with surface area, right? We're, we're designing custom racking, and this actually gets shipped like an accordion. It slides together and closer. And then once we have the dimensions, we designed to make that. And then, as you said, you have standard rooftop units. You're going to know your surface area and give us the model number, and that's all they need. And then the guy pulls it out of the box, pulls it apart wider, 
you know, mounts it and he's good to go. And again, the importance there is that then obviously depending on the, the height of the surface area determines how many, you know, sections of bulbs you have in that rack design. Whereas a lot of our competitors, they'll sell you the commercial bulbs, but then you still got to figure out how to fabricate a, a racking ballast system. Well, now we, we do that for you. So that's an example of the, sur of the surface area, but also because air is passing through this, you're going to get some airstream disinfection as well. Um, this is our NEMA 4X rated products. Um, again, this is where, hey, I just want to deal with either coil and or uh, airstream and I need to come in from the outside. I want it on the rooftop, completely waterproof, et cetera. Cool. Yeah, we do all that as well. And again, you're dealing with coil and or airstream as well. And then obviously this is our AS, the airstream model. This is what that one digital mock-up was showing you where, again, everything is outside the airstream. This whole entire module mounts on the outside of the ductwork. And then the only thing you're cutting holes for and punching through and sealing is getting those bulbs inside the installation. And then again, depending on the width of the supply duct, that'll determine if you need one or two sets of these, you know, to cover the distance, depending on how big the ductwork is. But that like, is not, that's not an outside ducted product. That is an indoor ducted product. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, if I'm on a rooftop and I'm dealing with a duct, I want to put this technology on a section of ductwork outdoors. You look at that NEMA 4X model. And that's why we put 4X. Like, as you can see, they're all UV matrix. We made the commercial series very simple. Everything is UV matrix. It's just SI, surface. Uh, 4X, obviously NEMA 4X. Uh, AS is supply. And then this is one of my favorite. And actually, Cindy loves this one. Uh, one of the last UV my matrix product. series. It's, it's more of a hillbilly zone. In, hillbilly. Uh, Go for it, Cindy. <laughs> it's hillbilly into IAQ. So basically, I, I mean, he, the dimensions aren't, I don't have my glasses on, or the dimensions, how small this is on there. It's smaller than a mini split. It's not that big. I have big. a separate spec sheet, but it's, yeah, it's very, it's, it's very small. Yes. And you, so. and you put it up with the same concept of the mini split and like a perfect thing would be one of those um, urgent care things. Maybe someone cares about the nurse there and wants to put that in that, that shows that, that we're always cleaning the air or um, a hotel lobby, something where it's not so, again, this is another person who, not, you know, there's your bowl, Brian, for sure. But this is again, like the less fancy way to go downtown. So this is oh. a, an independent product. We're yes. plugging it in or whatever, you just putting plug it, it in, in a room. You don't have to install anything, but it yeah, goes so, up. Go ahead. Right. I was gonna say, so this is your, this is using convective air. There's no fans, no motors, nothing. It's literally power, two bulbs, and your louvers. And you have, and at, per the specs, right? You're gonna, this is gonna treat about 225 square feet. So depending on the amount of room space, that'll determine then how many units you need. Uh, but I mean, again, you can get them stainless steel, you can get them powder coated. It's all, again, made at our factory in, in Vermont. So everything is nice, again, that nice heavy duty quality. Uh, but this is where, hey, I don't have any duct work, so I can't even look at any ducted solutions. Um, we do have a standalone desktop product I can show you as well. Uh, but this is one that's been very popular over in Europe, actually. And then UltraVision realized, hey, man, we need to start bringing this back into popularity again because it's proven. And this is used in like large, wide open, uh, massive hallways, uh, airports, for example, big open areas. Uh, one, one where I don't know who makes it, but... I know Wawa is huge here in our turf, uh, but here in Pennsylvania, there's another version of a Wawa. And every time I walk into one of those locations, you know, big gas station, convenience store thing, as I walk into the bath bathrooms, I always notice a blue light out of the corner of my eye. And they got one of these little boxes on the side of the walls as you're getting into the bathroom hallway and they're using UV light. So now granted, it doesn't follow our standards because we're telling you, you should not have it head high. It should be, you have to have at least a seven foot, you know, ceiling clearance because you need to have this up and away from people's faces. So whatever I was seeing at the gas station, I'm hoping it's not the same technology as this because I should not have seen things glowing. Do, do they have to change these bulbs every year too? Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. All it's right. just a regular, regular PM cycle. Uh, so again, this is based on convective air, right? Cool air is low, hot air is high. It's always, uh, you know, changing. So this just naturally is going to move the room's air through and being and you're treating it. So I have no duct work to work with. Here's your, here's your uh, saving grace. Or what did you call it? Hillbilly thing? <laughs> so, but again, their specs do call it out as a 
as a like a two uh, you're covering about 225 square feet so uh, I feel like I, not really IAQ now have you ever looked at something like this Ryan have you ever seen something like that before yeah I mean there's a couple of manufacturers that make you know something like this where they've they're putting some PCO I mean, sometimes there is a fan attached to it sometimes there's a media filter and right. then lights yeah so this technology is called that's why we call it the upper room and again, if I didn't get you the links already, I got to send them over to you. So real quick for your benefit, and this is not going to be very big on your screen, but the links we have, this is the direct link to the ashray.org. And this is chapter 62 uh, of, this is the handbook. All right. And this is where I see, I recognize this. This is where I got it uh, right out of their handbook for my presentation. But right here on 62.6 page, here they're, here they're showing you upper room designs in these wide open cafeterias, wide open hallways. They got these units installed over these doorways. So they actually call out that. Application, a school yeah. would be a application. Patient isolation rooms, right? So this is straight out of the handbook and we have a product that aligns with this. So again, if I didn't get you that link, I will get that to you. I apologize. Did I send it to you yesterday? No. Okay. It's because we, oh you know what I did? The email I sent over yesterday had the links to our blog articles. This is linked in that. I have an entire, at the bottom of each blog article, we have all of our, our sources. So every okay. single ASHRAE link is right there. But I'll, I'll send it to you as a, as a direct email so you could just keep that as, a, as an email, as a, as a tool for you. Um, but that's, that's it. I mean, residential to commercial, we cover it all. It, did I bring up a few things that helped fill in a couple of gaps for you at least? Because I know you did a lot of studying already. Yeah, I mean, the the... The fun part about this is that if I can get guys doing something, I'm doing better than I was. I think we sold, I think we sold six UV bulbs all last year. Okay. So I've already Wait, bulb, tripled our bulbs? business this year. Well, no, you know, you, uh, UV Rock units, whatever. Okay. Um, so I've already tripled my business this year, so I can move on to another SKU. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like but, what you think. Yeah, it's like, all right, we got to go do something. Oh, Brian, we can't go out and see people now, but do you think, uh, have you already done a webinar with everybody? Or would you like I have, one -on -one um, AJ like and I actually just asked AJ and Bobby to start setting up some for next week as well, um, again. So our two pushes right now while we're sitting at home doing nothing um, is what everybody thinks we're doing. Um, By the way, I, I've, been, I've been actually more stressed out and working harder at home all day i miss oh, driving it's my ridiculous, car ridiculous because we all have nothing to do on our hands and we're all professional talkers so what do we do we just talk we call everybody yeah well and honestly well, this is my third th just observation alone this is my third webinar today like one-on-one -on -one yeah. webinar style so that's the other thing as cindy didn't tell you like no, get your get your bad. guys to work with us i'll host it just like this i'll do the work for you guys yeah we um let's see so today so the two pushes for us right now are are um water treatment and indoor air quality because the same pitch it's the same idea it's just water instead of air and, and the customer you know because we deal with a, a you know a bunch of dumb plumbers and you know they're just a little bit dumber than dumb hvac guys but it's the same idea it's like why we're, haven't we're all, been we are all this? dumb in different ways that's what i love yeah. about our industry yeah <laughs> so um you know finally it's come up on their side um as well going well you know people are worried about their air what are we actually drinking and that's where we're starting god well the best part is uh again if you want a one-stop shop here's observation site and we have aquatronics so residential and commercial water solutions so what is, the, is that electric what do you mean uh you have yeah, uv bulb inside the actual ballast here and then okay. it's an in, yep. inline solution yeah so because we make this stuff for restaurants and uh, actually I was going to put this in my house too, but then luckily I realized, oh, I'm city water. So they said, technically, you're kind of like going a little too hardcore because my old house, I had, I had a well. They said, oh, no brainer. You know, you yep. don't know what's coming in your well water. So, but they said, well, the chances of you needing something at that level with city water that's already being treated, probably not. If you really no. want to be OCD, I could put it in. But no, UV would be great for the other crap that's in your water, but it's the, um, the hardness. Yeah, um, I already, I already have a water softener kind of in. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, it's I, not, I that's not going to do that. But you'd be surprised. You should have your water tested no matter what, and you should do it every year. I'm never going to drink the water here. I'm not going <laughs> to 
bother testing it. I, I'm like not even playing. I had my water tested. Why would I even drink the water here? Yeah, I did the water two years ago, and then we I installed know. a high-end water softening system. And because what we have, the city water we have is actually sourced from city-owned well fields. So then they treat it, but by the time it gets to your house, it is hard. We had yeah. hard water. Okay. So I, yep. I, I redid everything. So I, I have to get off the call because I've got um, another, another one with field piece in a little while soon. But I just wanted to say real quick. So Ryan, you got the quote for the, um, the Q-tips with the, yes. okay. Yep. So, and then I know that you are on a hot date with field controls. Yeah. But we want to see where we can get in the game. I don't think you need to offer just one brand. I think we have some things and they might have some things. And we'd like to see where we can support you by doing education or saying, okay, these are a couple of SKUs. We've got, a, I think, a two-week lead time on some things, a one-week maybe lead. Yeah, like the, the Solaris, depending on quality, is about one to two weeks. That's it right now. Whereas a lot of our competitors well, are still at six so weeks. If you sell this and don't have any stock, it'll be a little bit of time. So we want to... You know, I'm not, I'm not, I know one's really ordering a ton of stuff right now, except for indoor air quality, if you have the demand for it. And I don't know if you're going to be able to get your guys, you know, really engaged in it and how much business they'll be able to do. Well, we're, we're definitely going to be buying some Q-tips. Okay. Um, and I'm not, AJ's like all about a Q-tip right now. He's like, oh, they still have that. We need to order that. I was like, all right, we'll get some. And me an order for some Q-tips, baby. Um, we're going to, I got to send you an order for some of the M series product. Um, we need to put some of them on our shelf. Um, and there was something else that I was getting you as well. It's, I have a big list of stuff. Yeah, you guys have what, three branches? Yes. Have- yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, my, I have a company here in Pennsylvania. They keep at least two M series at each branch. And then they have some at their st- central DC. If you have one of those, I don't know. Yep, but like, yeah, that's, that's what they do. So yeah, so that's where we're at. Cool. Um, I appreciate you guys' time today. Um, Learn some other stuff, so that's good. Yeah, and back on the Pro One subject too, whether it's Ultravation Pro One, any of our stuff, Cindy, uh, Cindy, could hook. I'm, I'm happy to host these trainings, get your guys at the speed, but also pass these on to your contractor. Like I, I recorded today. I'll, I'll get you a link to this. This will be available on our YouTube, so you guys can use it as you see fit. Uh, because it shows that your company cares about this knowledge and getting educated, but also it's like, okay, I can do this for your contractors too. So, yep. yeah. All right, boys and girls. Great. Yay. Well, thanks. Thank everyone. you. Have a wonderful day. Yeah.